Okay, we waited 18 minutes to get uh, to the Mac Jones part of this story. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, First of all, let's just say this. I mean, the Mac Jones thing was stunning. I was like, really? What happened? Is this real? I had to check that one. That was that kind of move, wasn't it? I was like, whoa, what's going on here? Maybe I wasn't, my radar wasn't up for news at like, Whatever time that happened, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock or something on a Sunday yeah. <laughs> before all this, how surprised were you? I mean, I thought Adam Schefter got got hacked for a second <laughs> yes. because I, I had to conform with like three, okay, Ian Rapp report, that one checks out, okay, Adam Schefter, okay, that checks out. I guess the Jaguars are getting Mac Jones. I was shocked. Um, it makes zero sense to me, and, and I get really? what people are saying in terms of, oh, it's only six, like, I don't care about the pick. Yeah. Like, I don't care about the six-round pick, obviously, and the Jaguars don't really either. Look at their history of six-round picks. By the way, I was a fifth-round pick, so don't even go there, Brent. Um, but when we talk about what it means, like, here's my biggest complaint about Mac Jones getting traded to Jacksonville. Okay. In my opinion, there's three s- scenarios that you have for backup quarterback. The first one being a competition. Mm-hmm. Well, do you think Trevor Lawrence is in competition right now with Mac Jones? Nope. All right, so throw it off the table. Yep. Second scenario, you bring in an experienced guy like, you know, um, a Chase Daniel because he's been around systems for a while. He's a, he's a known backup quarterback, and you can bounce ideas. You can bounce questions off of him. Third scenario, you bring in a younger guy to help groom him to eventually be the starter, a la like they did with Jordan Love and Aaron Rodgers. This situation doesn't fit any of those scenarios. So to me, it makes zero sense. You're going to bring in a guy that's essentially the same age as Trevor Lawrence, same experience as Trevor Lawrence, and how does that help you from the backup quarterback position? Well, I think it helps in a couple of areas. Okay. We talk a lot about optics, what it means to the fans and everything else. I think this one is a little bit of an optic play when it comes to inside the building. You are going to, and we want to, again, safety conversation, this conversation, we're going to bring in competition for Luke Fortner. They just did. I mean, this guy's going to be the starter, but, you know, it looks you can at least present it as competition. I do think if you're saying, hey, here's our franchise quarterback in Trevor. We love Trevor. You know, even Trevor didn't play as well as he had hoped, but we are going to bring in competition. Do I really think it's competition? No. But I think, least, I think Mac Jones thinks it's competition. That's fine. I mean, but that's an issue. And I, oh, do, do you know what so. makes a backup quarterback a great backup quarterback? They know they're a backup quarterback. Well, I do think Mac Jones knows he's a backup quarterback right now in the NFL. Okay. Is he going to get a starting job anywhere else? He wouldn't. I think, he th- I think Mac Jones thinks he can start for this team. I really do. I, I, well, listen, you, you think, I think that, too, from a competitive standpoint, could he get the job done? I think he knows crystal clear who the quarterback is of this franchise. I actually think he's got a lot of Gardner Minshew in him. And from that sense, I know you're looking at this as a negative, like, hey, I think I can start on the better guy, blah, blah, blah. I think when uh, Gardner went to Philadelphia, I think he knew he was the backup quarterback. Of course. He had to settle into that role, even though he's built a lot like Mac, where he's like feisty guy that thinks he's probably better than Jalen Hurts. Because that's why you got to think. But I think he also settled into that role. Never heard any complaints out of Philadelphia about it. So I think this is a little bit similar to that spot. The, I think it preaches competition a little bit internally. Uh, but the bigger thing is this. You just gave us three scenarios, but you're missing a fourth. Hit me with it. The fourth is a new one. The bottom line in the NFL is quarterbacks get hurt. Okay. 68 or 70 something, whatever the number is, it's up over 68 each of the last two seasons in the NFL. The amount of quarterbacks that have played in the National Football League and like started a game, I think, 68 or 70 each of the last two seasons. Everybody needs their backup to step in at some point in this 17 game season, the way defensive fronts are, all of that. You need to be better there. And I think this is an opportunity for the Jags to get better. Do I think I think Max a better player than C.J. Beathard? Okay. I don't know that, by the way. I don't know how marginal that is. I don't dislike C.J. Beathard, but this also was a savings of about two million dollars when you got might have got a better player in Mac Jones to back up your quarterback. So, so I think it's really quite simple. I think you better be good at the backup spot, or you're screwed. And I do think internally it's okay to preach competition 
even though we know who the starter is clear and away and who's the guy. I don't think this sends a bad message, and I got to believe it, I got to hope, that Trevor knew about this and it was coming and was okay with it. Do you think he's really okay with it? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I think we paint the outside picture sometimes of, of too much. I think because we, on the outside as fans, see too much of the drama that could build more so than like what Trevor is saying. Trevor's like, yeah, what the heck, man? Let's go. Like, I, don't, I do not think Trevor cares that Mac Jones is now in the quarterback room. Okay. I don't. I, I, I get why people would say, oh, no, this could be. I mean, I think he definitely said, huh, interesting. Like, I, because once again, you want to talk about your fourth scenario where you need a backup quarterback to win you games? What about Mac Jones last season thinks that he can win games for this team? Not last season, but, I mean, he's won games in his NFL career. I just think he's okay. a better player. I would and just... he also went 2-9 and nine last year with 10 touchdowns and 12 interceptions. He got benched for Bailey Zappi. Yeah, I, listen, he has, his last two years have not been good. It's been tumultuous. But C.J. Beathard made, like, 14 starts in the NFL and won one game before last year. Okay. So, I mean – there's nothing that says he can win either in the NFL, right? I just okay, yeah, I, I hear you. Um, I mean, who's better? Who, seriously, who do you think's a better player? See, Beth better or, or Mac Jones? Yeah, I take experience over Mac Jones right now. Really? Yeah, because I, I mean, once I again, so. like, I, listen, if we're talking about backup court, first of all, horrible attitude to have to say, you know what? If Trevor Lawrence gets hurt, what's the backup plan? Like, I don't have those nah, conversations at all. No, it's yes, you do. It's what do you not, mean? Yes, you do. Why not? If we're talking about Trevor Lawrence getting hurt this this up and coming season, he got hurt th- three times okay, in the last listen, six though. weeks. Okay, and what happened with the season? So, like to me, if Mac Jones, Sam Darnold, Drew Locke, Ryan Tannehill, whoever the, the, the backup quarterback is, this team's in trouble. Okay, this isn't like the, the Kansas City Chiefs with Chad Henney, where it's like you know what we have all the pieces in place to be successful. We're all good. Chad Henney go in there and beat the Jaguars in the playoffs. It's not like that. If Trevor Lawrence does indeed go down. I hate to tell you, I think the season's going to be over. That's what everybody says. But you know what? You can't plan on that anymore. Uh, I don't plan on Trevor Lawrence getting hurt. You have to have a backup option that's viable. to Josh Dobbs saved the Minnesota Vikings season, and some people would say hurt their chances to go get an ex-quarterback because he went 2-2. and Now, he was horrendous in like the final couple of games, but he won a couple of games for them to actually keep their season alive for a month. And guess what? Josh Dobbs is a great quarterback because he's been around the NFL for a long time, has a lot of experience, is a very smart guy, and guess what? Knows that he's a backup quarterback. I can't say those same things about Mac Jones. So, yeah, I can't come with you and say I enjoy Mac Jones coming to Jacksonville because the risk versus the reward, once again, don't care about the six-round pick whatsoever. Throw him away. Don't care. My only issue is, does he know he's a backup quarterback? I think that's up for debate. And number two, does he have experience? Can you bounce ideas off of Can you bounce questions off of him? Well, I think it's kind of hard to. Same age, essentially, as Trevor Lawrence's. Yeah, and, and it might be. That dynamic might be more difficult. I, I can get there with you. I understand what you're saying. I just also think that you better be better than just the guy that's old. I mean, if you think you can be better at that spot in case you need him, I'd rather have the guy that might be better and feel pretty good about my backup. I mean, listen, everybody talks about Trent Baalke on this move. This is a Doug Peterson move to me. This is all Doug. Doug, no, he won with a backup quarterback. He won the Super Bowl. With a backup quarterback. He was a backup quarterback for 20 years. You think this move's getting made without Doug Peterson approving this move? He knows the value of it. He knows the importance of it. And I don't, this is where I think we get soft. Trevor Lawrence is one of the great talents we've seen come out of college and high school and everything in the last 10, 15 years. Whether he's generational or not, whether he's as good in the NFL as you thought he would be, that's not the point. He's so good. He's really gifted. He doesn't give a damn who you bring in here. He's better than that guy. (laughs) He doesn't care. He is better. We know he's better. Mac knows he's better. Trevor knows he's better. Doug knows he's better. Trent knows he's better. He doesn't care who you bring in here. You can bring in Justin Fields if you want, and Trevor will be like, yeah, so what? I'm 10 times better than him. Let me ask you this. Why don't the Kansas City Chiefs do this? Why don't the Kansas City Chiefs go with the younger route then and say, you know what, let's bring in a guy that's Patrick Mahomes' age or even younger? Because, hey, Patrick Mahomes, his running capabilities, he's been hurt in the past. Why not go with the younger direction in the Kansas City Chiefs? I don't know. It's a good question. Because it's not what you do. It's not what the Chiefs do. I think it's not what a lot of teams do. Patrick Mahomes has missed how many games? I have no idea, man. You tell me. I, I don't have the numbers in front of me. None. <laughs> I mean, he's... Yeah. No, nah, he was out for... I don't know if he missed a start. 
I feel like he. I don't feel like he's missed a start. I think Chad Henney got one start over him. In but by the, the way, prime time game. I don't know. The Chiefs did this in a different way. And Alex Smith, MVP candidate, sure. <laughs> and brought in Patrick Mahomes. They okay. created competition. The New England Patriots did this under Brady. They drafted second round quarterbacks and third round quarterbacks. Didn't bother bother Brady because Brady was experienced then, Brent. Like he was the guy. Like Brady, I don't know what how year he brought in Bra- Garoppolo or how. I, I mean, guess Brady, Brady had, had to have like career. six or seven years at least in that NFL before they brought Probably in Jimmy. Did. Yeah, he did. I don't know. I don't know, man. I I can't come there with getting better at a position that 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 you almost every team has to play their backup quarterback. Even this one that this guy's tough and he's healthy, and they had to play their backup quarterback in a critical game last year. And I mean, it's just the business now. I think it's just changed. The, the Mac thing just doesn't bother me as much as everybody else. Now, listen, I'll come with you on this. If we find out that it bothers Trevor, then shame on the organization. Because yeah. I think that's what people are saying. It's like, well, okay, well, everybody who said, hey, let's uh, upgrade the offensive line, Trevor, you got to take care of Trevor. Well, they just did it this morning. So you can check that box. Now people are saying, well, he wants Calvin Ridley back. I mean, is he going to the wall for Calvin Ridley? I don't know. He said it in front of a microphone. And now you're going to bring in... Some competition? Again, he ain't scared of that competition. If it's getting you better, I think he understands it. And some would say he's taking away your, like, your, one of his good buddies in C.J. Bethard. Well, this is a business, all right? This isn't hanging out at the country club and, and let's play golf. Mm. I bet, I bet there have been a lot of buddies that have been cut. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Along the way. So I'm not concerned about Trevor here. I think he's a lot tougher than everybody else is. is, is I'm saying. not. I'm not questioning the toughness. I'm not questioning Trevor Lawrence thinks that Mac Jones is taking his starting spot. All I'm questioning is is having a backup quarterback from your draft class that is your exact same age or maybe has you beat by a couple months is the best possible outcome for your quarterback development. And I don't think it is. I think bringing in a veteran who has a lot of experience, who's played in a lot of offenses that you can bounce ideas off of, is going to be more beneficial to Trevor Lawrence's development as a quarterback than bringing in a guy who's the exact same age, who is coming to Jacksonville, whether you believe it or not, with intentions of, you know what? If something happens here with Trevor, I'm going to be the guy going forward for a long time to come. 